today speaking about foundational supports over these 10 minutes or so. It's a really big topic and I don't think I can do it justice in this amount of time. So I guess my goal is predominantly to provide some thought provokers for providers and participants and families. So the first thing that I would note is that if you're very interested in these subjects, which I guess we should all be if we've got the time to look at it all, is there's lots of resources on the agency website, but also the Department of Social Services. And I'll explain DSS a little bit more if you haven't heard about that, about what's happening with NDIS review and reform and foundational supports. So with foundational supports, I think the first thing to understand there is that in everything that we've read so far, it's been made clear that it'll be an expansion of the information linkages and capacity building program, ILC. The thing to understand there that I'm not sure everyone is across now is that it's moved from the NDIA, the agency's purview, and now sits under DSS, so the Department of Social Services. It's a tendered program and meets the needs of different communities, very similar to if anyone has experience across aged care and the Commonwealth Home Support Program it's tendered in different communities. So I guess Bill Shorten's review process and reform was to get federal, but also so Commonwealth and states and territories to come together and look to expand the information, um, the ILC program. So over this coming, in quotation marks, five year reform process, we should expect the ILC program to really expand, probably in the order of hundreds of millions of dollars. If not, it could be a billion dollar plus program. I guess the takeaway there for providers is to participate in those sorts of tenders. You'll have to be NDIS registered and it'll be a, quite a competitive tender process for foundational supports. So as a provider, you don't necessarily need to be part of that. There's many, for example, an analogy for aged care is there's many aged care providers that aren't CHSP providers as well. So just because foundational supports becomes a thing doesn't mean that changes the total landscape of your ability to operate as a provider. And the same applies to participants and families as well. You can think of this as an addition of supports to the disability landscape, mainly for those that have been denied access to NDIS at present, which the numbers on that are actually astronomically high. And we see that at community therapy all the time, especially with our occupational therapists helping people with access when people get turned down on their eligibility criteria. The whole purpose of foundational supports is to uh, provide that support layer for more lower level domestic and social support and transport. When will we see those things happen? I don't have those answers, um, it may be We've, all we've known is that's across the next couple of years. I will make the point of noting that we should see some things happening over these 12 to 24 months ahead across these things with NDIS review, navigation, coordination of support changes, plan management, predominantly because it's been quite clear in the literature that 1 July 2026 is where the growth target of 8% per year comes in for the scheme. So you would assume that the agency wants to move a lot of things forward before that date. But I'll make a second point that the agency makes it clear and so does the DSS that they expect the reforms to mature through to the mid 2030s. So they make that point to say that so far with the NDIS participants, families, stakeholders, providers, we're all quite used to navigating change and that change probably isn't going away. We're gonna see more of it. So I think what we focus at community therapy for our team, but also participants and families that we're privileged to support is we try and offer some sense of slow as smooth change management. So for participants and families, my recommendations with all these review processes and constant changes going on is reach out to your local area coordinator, reach out to your coordinator of supports and ask those questions and ignore the media to some degree. They're always going to be quite clickbaity to, you know, whether that's on TV, on radio or in social media. 
rely on the information from local area coordinators and coordinators of support. And the same would go across providers as well. We see a lot of negative media across providers, yet we have so many wonderful human beings in providers trying to just provide good supports. Are there some shonky, um, using Bill Shorten's words, providers out there? Of course there are, as there are in every sector, but I truly believe that you know everyone that you speak to today at the stalls, these are all good people looking to provide good services because we're really passionate about what we do. There's people like me that have been in the industry for 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years and have dedicated their whole degrees and, and professions to looking after people that you know have functional impairments, disabilities, age-related changes, etc. So hopefully the main takeaway I would say is if you're not up to speed on foundational sports, start Googling it and start following some of the um, NDIS or Department of Social Services DSS newsletters because they will keep releasing information on it. Thank you so much. Any questions? Otherwise, I will retire to stage left. <laughs>